na tutakutana huko. Na wacha niseme na hasira kidogo. Lakini kwa amani, kwa amani, kwa amani. Ya. Tutarudi. Na tukishamaliza tutarevisit hii mambo yenu. Ya. Tunaanza kutunaliza kila saa, kila pahali tukienda. Oh, jaji amesema eh tunafanya kazi hii unakuja una block unaweka injunction kwani unafikiria wewe umechaguliwa na nani no 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 there's a problem and we must fix it going forward we must fix it we must fix that problem we have a problem with our judiciary but in god bless we respect but we shall revisit We shall respect but we shall revisit this agenda. Yes. Oh yes. yes. We shall. Yes. First and foremost, we shall address ourselves to the people of Kenya. Yes. Can you imagine? Case backlog reduction that we had started and was moving very well, especially those cases beyond five years, has come to a halt. Quota next mediation which we rolled countrywide and which has helped Kenya to improve on its World Bank ease of doing business index has come to a standstill. ICT, as I told you, they have taken the whole 100% of what was allocated to us. As a result, we are unable to pay even for Wi-Fi. This has thrown the plans we had put in place for harnessing technology in total disarray. The e-filing we had started cannot go on. Electronic revenue collection is going to be hampered. And we are sorry to report that the, the, the plans that we had finalized to automate the anti-corruption courts to speed up the hearing of corruption cases in Milmani as now foreign acropa. Treasury is being used to frustrate the judiciary. The judiciary has been treated with contempt and they want to control the judiciary and make judiciary courts a puppet. The words of Chief Justice David Moraga in his press briefing today reacting to budget cuts that have not that have crippled the judiciary. Well, Chief Justice David Maraga lay bare the frustrations his office and the entire judiciary has been suffering at the hands of the executive led by President Uhuru Kenyatta, and even went an extra mile to reveal an alleged secret plot by the executive to remove him from office before December 31st. Question is, is the judiciary under siege? Does someone want to control the judiciary? And more scary, does someone want to make the judiciary a puppet? Those are the questions we'll be seeking to answer this evening on The Big Story. We'll be speaking to Kakai Kissinger, who's a lawyer, but he has vast knowledge of how the judiciary works. Um, he worked as the Deputy Chief Registrar of the Supreme Court and Chief Registrar in an acting capacity. We'll be speaking to him in a couple of minutes from now. Uh, but right now, let's bring in our lead reporter, Sophia Wanuna. But before we get to Sophia Wanuna, it's important to mention that we'll also be speaking to Mutula Kilonzo Jr. just to get his uh, sentiments on that press briefing by uh, CJ David Moraga. But right now, let's bring in Sophia Wanuna. Sophia, good evening. I know that you're speaking to Kimani Shungwa, who's the chair of budget committee. And last week when we were having a conversation um, very close to this one, he said, I mean, we didn't slash the budget of the judiciary. We, we, we played our role. So basically don't understand where all this is coming from. Sophia. Indeed, good evening, Linda. A long press conference, even by his admission, the Chief Justice earlier addressing the media and the nation by extension, saying that, in fact, this issue of the cuts in as far as the budget allocation to the judiciary had impacted heavily on their work on service delivery, um, but also took some time to focus on the office of the Chief Justice and the issues he raised around how he was treated during Mashujar Day, the car he drives that it's not like the others, state house that CSS, PSS get to get in before him. Uh, so there were two issues, the budget cuts and the judiciary and the work that needs to be done, but that now cannot go on because that money, according to him, 
has been withheld by Treasury. Uh, but on the other hand, the Office of the Chief Justice, the kind of, in his view, respect and what is in the Constitution in as far as there are three arms of government, executive, uh, the legislature, and the judiciary. So saying the judiciary has been treated with a lot of contempt. And he went ahead to give examples uh, in the recent past that have played out. In fact, saying he will choose going forward events in as far as public occasions that he will attend, but making a case for that it's not about him, the person, but it's about the office of the Chief Justice, who's also the President of the Supreme Court, the Chairperson of the Judicial Service Commission. And speaking of the JSC, it was curious, and some noted that, that in his press conference today, he was a lone ranger. You would imagine with such issues, the gravity of budget of the judiciary and the impact and import of the same, he would be flanked by the members of the Judicial Service Commission. However, on this one, he stood there and for over half hour spoke about just what the impact of this slashes, uh, slash in budget allocation means uh, to the judiciary, especially the ICT function, those uh, courts, the mobile courts, that those cannot continue to operate. But to speak more to the point you made, Linda, I have with me the chair of the Budget Committee in the National Assembly, Kimani Ichungwa, who I remember last week we were talking about the debt. And of course, again, an issue he would be well versed to speak about. And when we ask of his view on this, as we also heard from uh, the leader of majority in the National Assembly, Eden Duale, they maintained that no budget allocation had been cut, that it would require a supplementary budget to be presented before Parliament. However, the CJ today coming out to say Duale was wrong to call out the judiciary for quote-unquote playing politics. So, Mr. Chairman, thank you for making time for us. Um, so at the time you spoke, I suppose you maintain the position that it's the role of Parliament as far as the uh, budget is concerned, and if there are any reviews, it still comes back to you. But here's a CJ coming to say that when he was called out by you, by the leader of majority and others, um, it was because you are the ones who are misinformed, not him. He knows because he's able to access and now cannot access some funds. I think, Sophia, I will still maintain the position that I expressed last week uh, when I spoke to you. And um, I remember that was in the backdrop of discussions that we had had with the registrar of the Supreme Court and uh, also with the Cabinet Secretary and the team from the National Treasury as a Budget and Appropriations Committee. And I would maintain the position that indeed what I said, um, and that is a position as it is, and uh, that is the same position the CJ reiterated today, mm -hmm. that it is not practical, it is not possible within the law to change the budget either of the national government, the executive, or any other arm of government, including the judiciary and parliament, without coming back to parliament. Mm -hmm. Administratively, the cabinet secretary can effect uh, certain changes within the budget of the executive uh, arm of government and uh, be able to come and have that ratified by parliament uh, post facto uh, through a supplementary budget. Mm -hmm. But the two uh, other budgets that are of other independent arms of government, that of parliament and that of the judiciary, the cabinet secretary has no powers to do that. Mm -hmm. And therefore, when we uh, maintain the position that as far as we are concerned as parliament, the budget to the judiciary, the budget to parliament is as was approved uh, in, uh, at the end of June this year in the Appropriations uh, Act of 2019. And until and unless that Appropriations Act is amended mm. through maybe a supplementary uh, 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 budget that would come and we do uh, another supplementary Appropriations Act that mm. would amend the, the Appropriations Act of June 2019, mm -hmm. then the Appropriations Act remains as it were. Yeah. And therefore, legally and uh, for all practical purposes, the budget of the judiciary ought and should remain as was approved by parliament yeah. until and unless a supplementary budget is tabled by, uh, before parliament and approved by parliament. Yeah. And I think that is the same position the CJ took today, that anything done uh, outside that legal framework is unconstitutional and so and because against the law. and because something was done outside that legal framework we now know for a fact it was the cabinet secretary acting treasury ukuri atani acted outside 
the boundaries of the law in your view? Let me say we are bound to have a meeting tomorrow following the directions of the Speaker of the National Assembly last week because you remember this is an issue that was raised by I think the Honorable Peter Kaluma mm -hmm. last week in Parliament mm -hmm. and the Speaker did uh, give directions that we do convene a meeting and what we had done we had intended we intend rather to have a joint meeting between the Cabinet Secretary and the Judicial Service Commission uh, for us to get to the bottom of this matter, because as far as we are concerned as Parliament, uh, when the CEO says, I have not changed the, the budget, as was approved by Parliament, because we put a direct question to him, have you in any way changed the budget of the judiciary or when, that of Parliament? When was this? That was last week on Friday. And he was emphatic that he had not changed that. He had only done a circular to all accounting officers across all arms of government, uh, informing them of the austerity measures that they intend to take. Mm -hmm. If by any chance, mm -hmm. administratively, there's something they have done maybe to make sure that uh, people do not spend beyond what they may want, uh, they may not want them to spend beyond. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I'm saying uh, for the executive arm of government. The CS has powers within the law to do that and come to parliament for, for post facto approval. Yeah. But for the other independent arms of government that formulate their own budgets and submit to the National Assembly, he can only do that after parliament has yeah. approved. He cannot do it before. And therefore, if uh, for heaven's sake he has done anything like that, th that in my own view would be an, an act uh, that would be ultra vires yeah. uh, uh, beyond his powers as CS. And I think that's the uh, other thing the 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 uh, Speaker of the National Assembly said actually uh, the comment that I had from the Speaker of the National Assembly, uh, Speaker Muturi, mm -hmm. was that maybe the judge who gave the orders that he gave uh, uh, against the CES last week should simply have said that uh, the Appropriations Act as enacted by Parliament in June remains in force mm -hmm. until it is amended. And therefore the, the, the contention we had with the judge issuing orders to a CES is that in fact you are giving orders to somebody who has no powers to do what but, they yeah. Or they, 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 they are purported to have done. But, but now, Chair, we know that the judge then did not err, in fact, because there was a stoppage in as far as funds to the judiciary is concerned by the admission and what we had from the uh, CJ today. So if then the uh, CS last week told you nothing had changed and now we know that, in fact, the funds did not continue to flow as they should have, he, not, he lied to Parliament. You see, uh, from listening to the um, long press conference by the CJ, I don't think the issue is really to do with actual uh, the actual budget as approved, because that has not been varied by anybody. Mm -hmm. I think the issue is to do with administrative actions that have been taken by somebody in Treasury, I uh, don't even want to say he's a CS, I do not know who has taken those administrative measures. And one of the things that uh, probably we intend to do or would want to do to see is uh, the, the figures that have been loaded into the IFMI system. We would want to ascertain for, for sure what is it that has been loaded onto IFMIS. Mm -hmm. Is it the budget as approved by Parliament or are there other figures uh, outside what was approved by Parliament. Uh, and I think that is a, an engagement that uh, probably I shouldn't preempt until we get a sitting with the two, two, um, uh, two arms of government, the judiciary and uh, also the executive. Yeah, because uh, we did speak to C.S. Yatani, and in his view, the austerity measures that needed to be implemented and they were being implemented across the board and that there cannot money cannot be min printed, you know. If there isn't money, then everybody has to tighten belt even the judiciary. So the question, I suppose, here becomes, um, did what he said to you and what, in fact, happened in as far as the judiciary budget is concerned. Um, but going forward, also in that press conference, the CJ spoke about the judiciary fund and that the laws had been passed. And So what does this mean going forward? Is it that it's reinfenced? It will not have interference, as we are seeing now? Uh, one true austerity measures uh, would affect everybody, and I think even myself, I said in Parliament last week that the judiciary should also not expect to uh, formulate and approve their own budgets in court. That will not happen because the Constitution also provides a mechanism through which budgets are formulated and approved in this country. Mm -hmm. We cannot do through that through the courts. And th th that's why I thought probably somebody had jumped the gun, uh, those uh, from LSK who jumped the gun to rush to court. Because as I told you last week, we had begun that engagement as early as last, uh, the other week on Friday. Mm -hmm. 
And one of the issues we were deliberating on between ourselves, uh, the Judicial Service Commission and Treasury, is that yes, the austerity measures that have been, t uh, th 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 that have been proposed by the National Treasury, mm -hmm. and we did engage with the Judicial Service Commission and we agreed they would also retreat and uh, be able to advise from the approved budget mm. what is it that they can uh, live without and what is it that they can't live without. Mm. And I'll give you a classic example. There are new courts, and I did hear the CJ speak to the issue of building new courts. Mm -hmm. And um, within the development budget of the judiciary, there could be probably one or two or three new courts to be built mm -hmm. in this financial year. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are others that are still uh, within um, uh, probably 60, 70 percent of completion. Mm -hmm. uh, and and we are, uh, in the discussion, we were proposing maybe we can leave adequate money to be able to complete those that are incomplete and maybe defer the construction of a new one to maybe another financial year. Uh, what the CJ was saying, that if you allocated five, six billion mm -hmm. shillings every year, mm -hmm. you'd be able to build so many courts in the country, but it doesn't have to be done right now. But maybe, for instance, if you have a court, uh, for instance, in uh, uh, Kikuyu for lack of a better example, mm -hmm. <laughs> if they had begun building a court, you know, that they have done one in Kikuyu, mm -hmm. uh, I wish they would. <laughs> but, but, um, if it was probably at 50% or 60% completion, mm -hmm. have adequate money to complete that and settle okay. all pending bills. Because again, it becomes very expensive to have yeah. stalled projects all over the country, and therefore we want to support them to be able to uh, complete that. But if you can sacrifice the construction of a new court, maybe in Limuru or Kajiado or somewhere else, mm -hmm. for this financial year and be able to begin it in the next financial year when the economy improves, again, that is a discussion you can have. Foreign travel, for instance, I had as one of the examples that was given that uh, what is in the system, their system is something I'm not seeing is what they are saying, mm. is that negative, uh, I think, 21 million shillings or something like that. Mm. Uh, you can live without some element of foreign travel, but uh, uh, probably the negative, maybe you make good that, but you could decide for the next six or seven months to the end of the financial year, mm. we can live without for, uh, okay. unnecessary yeah. foreign travel, but mm. what is very necessary, we can travel. Uh, domestic travel where you have to get a judge from Kisumu, from Garissa, from Mandera, mm. maybe to sit in Nyeri as a three-judge bench, that is necessary. Okay. If you need three judges to sit in Malindi, for instance, in the uh, Lands Court, uh, they have a shortage of judges in the Lands and Environment Court. Mm -hmm. If you need a judge to move from one point to the other to go and sit there, then mm -hmm. you need to uh, enable them uh, for, for the dispensation of justice okay. to, to flow seamlessly. Yeah. And we, uh, we are intent as parliament and as representatives of people because this justice is being dispensed to the people that the we represent. People. Therefore, okay. we have an interest. Okay. And therefore, all uh, probably would call for a sobriety in this matter from both the judiciary and the executive. But it would appear the judiciary has been so by just that these things have been taking effect, even when you did not know. But finally and briefly, the, the, to, to the, the point, because the, our time is up, mm -hmm. uh, Chairman, to the point of the revisit, because now to the questions around the contempt the CJ said is being treated with, the vehicles that the other arms of governments drive is not what the CJ <laughs> is driving, um, uh, how he's treated is not how everybody else is treated, saying even he may boycott some of the public national events just because of how the office of the Chief Justice is being taken and handled. Is this a revisit to you briefly? Uh, let me answer you on the Judiciary Fund. And uh, true, as the CJ said, Parliament, we have done our bit to approve the regulations and therefore that will come into effect and it's one of the discussions that we had with the Judiciary. <coughs> on the issue of uh, uh, the Mercedes Benzes and uh, everything else, I also wish I had one. I wish I would have access to State House like everybody else. Uh, but those are issues may probably I would not want to dwell the into. The President myself. ahead of an arm of government, is he I being think, fussy over all, nothing or does he have a all, point? All I can say is that all arms of government, all arms of government uh, should be accorded the respect that they deserve in line with their, their standing uh, in the Constitution because, uh, as uh, has been said, it is the Kenyan people who chose to have uh, three separate arms of government like uh, in all modern democracies mm -hmm. and um, accord everybody the respect they deserve. And um, I really don't want to dwell on to the other issues. Okay. Let me dwell on budget issues. Not on revisit. There's not a revisit in your view? I do not see on budget matters. 
Entirely. Everything. The contempt, the budget. Those everything. are the issues. I'm saying I, I, I do not know what happens in the executive. I also don't. Uh, I hardly, uh, you, you hardly ever even see me in the executive arms of government. Uh, I, I concentrate. You are a member of the Jubilee Party. You Jubilee are the Party in uh, Parliament. In Parliament. Yes. So briefly, do you think it's a revisit? Perspective wise, not because you know of some real motive, but just from how it looks I to will, everybody I else. Will, I will tell you with no fear of contradiction, at least on the budget. And if anybody is intent on revisiting, we as Parliament will not allow okay. any sort of revisit using uh, unconstitutional means. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well said. Thank you very much to the chairman of the National uh, Assembly Budget uh, Committee uh, speaking to us and saying that at the end of the day, and as far as the budget is concerned, for the judiciary, that they will safeguard Linda. Sophia Anuna, thank you. Uh, speaking to Kimani Shugwa, who's the chair, National Assembly Budget Committee, basically saying, I mean, the budget to the judiciary was is as was approved as far as, as they are concerned and they're having a meeting with the treasury CS just to try and see if they can iron all these issues out i'm hoping we have mutula kilonzo jr on phone do we yes do we have mutula kilonzo jr on phone please okay so while we're still trying to see if we can get mutula kilonzo jr um on phone allow me to speak the mind of kakai kissinger kakai um, thank you so much for joining us on The Big Story this evening. And this is why it's very important for you to be part of this conversation you have been inside. So maybe you can give us perspective into what exactly is going on, because I do know that you are the Deputy Chief Registrar of the Supreme Court. That is in 2011. And then you're the Chief Registrar in an acting capacity in 2013. You have a visibly agitated CJ um, giving that presser early on in the morning. Um, so you've, hear, you've heard from Kimani Shunga says we did not slash the budget. The CJ says the budget was slashed. Uh, a good number of legal minds are very upset about this. What do you read into all this? Uh, thanks, <coughs> thanks very much, Linda, for, for inviting me here. Yes, I listened to the speech of the CJ and reflected a lot in terms of what he was coming from, where he's coming from, and what he's trying to communicate. And it was, uh, if you listened very clean, clearly the first 20 minutes, it was uh, a speech full and loaded with facts and uh, legal analysis. And therefore, I will want to concentrate more on the first 20 minutes of, uh, of his speech. Mm -hmm. And the things that came out very clearly in that speech is that uh, basically he feels that the judiciary is under siege and that the judiciary is not acting or is not doing its work or functions uh, optimally according to the Constitution. But I think we need to look back at the Constitution. When we as Kenyans passed the 2010 Constitution, we wanted some functions to be done by the judiciary. And we say that we must have uh, separate arms of government, and of course judiciary is one of the arms of government that is separate and independent. And we came up with a very elaborate legal structure, including the Supreme Court, the Court of Appeal, the High Court, and Magistrates' Courts. All these systems require money for that institution to be able to, to function properly. If, for example, the census came out today and we have 47 million plus Kenyans, all these Kenyans, and I agree with the CJ, Kenya is a very litigious nation. All these Kenyans want to litigate and have the matter solved in court. And therefore, you understand the challenges that the judiciary is going through. And I really feel sad for the CJ in the sense that he even went down into numbers and said, look, every year we're having about 4,000 cases being uh, uh, coming to court, and we need to deal with them. So at the end of the day, we need a judiciary that is functional. At the end of the day, we need a judiciary that addresses its functionality in the Constitution, and we need a judiciary that functions well. But now the challenge is the issue of funds that are being allocated to the judiciary. I think when I was in the judiciary at the time, we were very lucky at that time to have a budget of about 18 billion every financial year. But we did this because we wanted to ensure that we were prouding and saying that we have a new constitution, and this new constitution requires funds to enable it to run. Right now, the judiciary funds are very minimal and are having these challenges. So when I heard the CJ complain, because this is year in, year out. I think if you remember uh, the former Chief Justice Bernard Chunga, he had the same problems complaining. When you remember the former, uh, apart from CJ Mutunga, who, who was very lucky to have had a very good run in the judiciary, the other CJs have had always challenges of, of, of funds. But then we realize that the biggest problem in that institution is formalizing these things in the law. Look at the current constitution right now. What, what it calls for, therefore, is an amendment to that constitution to allow a certain percentage of the government budget to be allocated to the judiciary. 
The moment you do that, for example, you can come up with a budget of, let's say, out of the total budget that is government budget, we have 3.5% or 4% going directly to the judiciary. We were crying at the time saying that we need our own fund. Right now, they, they establish the judicial fund. Therefore, if you have a law which actually caps and makes a ceiling whereby any money appropriated by the national, by the, by parliament must then go to that fund and must be 3.5, bare minimum, or 4%. Why do we have in the Constitution a, a, a law that requires county government to have a minimum of 15%? Why not then push it to the judiciary to have a minimum ceiling? If you have that, then you remove the complaint from the CJ. He will sit pretty, knowing very well, at the end of the day, when a budget is there, I have my 3.5% uh, already allocated to me. How the judiciary deals with it in terms of the Judicial uh, Act, it is mm. their responsibility. So, so that, that would actually solve his headache right now. He'd it will completely... Just say, okay, yes. I have what I need at the end of the day. Um, year in, year out, so he wouldn't have to worry about how much will be allocated to him, whether or not Treasury will, will slash it. And as he says, there's a deliberate attempt to frustrate the judiciary. And this is where I want to bring in Mutula Kilonzo Jr. He's joining us on phone. Senator, thank you so much for speaking to us on The Big Story. And I'm speaking to you in your capacity as a lawyer as well. Do you get the feeling from where you sit that this is a judiciary under siege, as um, outlined by Chief Justice David Maraga today? Can Mutula Kilonzo Jr. hear me? Do we have Mutula Kilonzo Jr. online? Okay, so that's the second attempt. Let me give it one final attempt and see if Mutula Kilonzo Jr. can hear me. Um, Kakai, I'm actually interested because you at some point worked deep within the judicial system. How were you able to raise money back then that is not happening now? And why does it seem as, as, as if the judiciary is being crippled by the executive? What are the other ways in which they can sort this out? And as you answer that, um, there are those who think that perhaps David Maraga should not have addressed this the way he did. Uh, to answer your first question, as I said before, I think one of uh, my first days in the judiciary, we were able to get about 18.5 billion, which was a very good thing. But at that time, the new constitution had just come into place, and we were trying to say, look, we can work, and we can do this, and all that. But what the constitution or what the law says is that, the, of course, the judiciary is supposed to get its money from government, because it's uh, funded by, 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 state, uh, by, by Kenyans. And uh, therefore, the, the challenge is always, how do you reach out to parliament, because the uh, budget is appropriated in parliament. How do you reach out to Parliament to ensure that actually Parliament gives you what you require? What we realized at the time was the disconnect between the three arms of government. So we moved closer to, 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 to Parliament and approached the Budget Committee, approached the Legal Affairs Committee, and we were talking with them, telling them where our agenda is, where we want to go. Let them feel how actually the judiciary is running. And at that time, they were able to understand why we are seeking for that kind of money. I think that CRJ right now must be doing it. I don't know where the challenges maybe might be arising. But then the other option of raising money will have been, or is that, Try to come up, and which we did, coming up with the development partners. We approached so many development partners and clustered our programs and said these ones can be managed by development partners. I was actually running the project that was being uh, managed by development partners, that is the World Bank. And we were able to bring in uh, quite a lot of money in terms of supporting the work of the judiciary. Because the law is very elaborate, the law is very good. It gives the judiciary power to raise its own funds. So we took advantage of that and ensured that we must run and ensure that although government might not have enough money to give, but then we can use other means and sources to raise more money. So that's a responsibility, of course, that the judiciary might be doing. I do not know right now what they're doing, but that's one of key areas that we, we really managed to, to work on. Mm. Talk to me about the relationship between the three arms of government. You have the CJ visibly agitated. Um, the fingers are being pointed at the executive. You have the legislature that is saying, we have no idea how we even got here. Why is it important for these three? I know it is important, but paint for me a picture of what would happen if the three arms of government do not work together, and specifically what that means for the judiciary. Ideally, three arms of government are all arms of government, and no. they need to work uh, independently, but at the same time have synergy in terms of collaboration, how they operate. So there's that uh, legal argument that we are an independent arm of government, but at the same time we are interdependent because you must 
depend on the other. Judiciary is independent, but must depend on parliament when it comes to appropriating for money, and must also depend on executive when judges are being appointed, being sworn in, and so forth and so on. So this arms of government, the relationship between the arms of government is something that must be merged or something that must be worked on by the head of institutions. So CJ Maraga, uh, I'm very sure he has been trying to bring the gap between executive and, uh, and legislature. But at the same time, when you are doing it, the problem with the judiciary is that when you are doing it, it's a very sensitive portfolio in the sense that you do not want to be seen to be playing around with the executive or playing around with the legislature and will be accused of this and that. So it's a very yeah. dicey situation in terms of how you juggle and handle the issue of, uh, of working with the relationship. But the bottom line is that the three arms of government must work together. What the judiciary must be aware of, that this, the National Council for the Administration of Justice, this is a council that brings together all actors in the, in the justice system. What is not clear, and the law is not there, is that the law has not forced parliament to be part of the National Council for Administration of Justice. So there has to be an amendment. And in fact, when I was listening to the CJ's speech, I was more of reflecting myself, what are the solutions? And some of the solutions is amending that act and ensuring that actually parliament has a seat in the National uh, Council for the Administration of Justice. What that will then do will ensure that uh, parliament understands from what go how actually judiciary operates. What are the challenges the judiciary is facing? Because they have these annual meetings they, they always hold. So okay. that's one of the things that we need to harmonize and, and, and agree. But right. above all, the chief registrar, which I think she must be doing, must take a proactive strategy okay. of actually associating herself with parliament more. All right. I need to take our first break here on The Big Story, but I hear you. Kakai Kissinger, who's a lawyer, speaking to us on The Big Story. We're taking a break. When you come back, I am hoping we will speak to Mutula Kilonzo Jr. as well, just to get his perspective on some of the allegations that were made by uh, Chief Justice David Maraga, because ultimately, these three arms of government have to work together. They must work together. Let's take that break now on The Big Story.